Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Patrick. And I'm Andy. And today we're going through our top five best and top five worst attractions at Magic Kingdom. We're not gonna lie, this was the hardest list to make because Magic Kingdom is our favorite park at Walt Disney World. We love it. Now for our rankings, we rate the best and the worst based on how much fun the attraction is compared to the typical queue time. Your list is definitely going to differ from ours. It's important to think about what your family will love and just go with that list. This is just for fun. Before we begin, if you're headed to Walt Disney World soon and you want some money saving tips, we're including a link to that video in the description below. Also, we're trying to visit every single Disney park on the planet this year. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of those adventures. I can say that in my sleep now. <laughs> now let's start with our top five attractions at Magic Kingdom, starting with number five. Jungle Cruise. This is a fun riverboat ride, which has a great rewritability factor because of your skipper, which really makes the ride what it is. Your skipper will spit out joke after joke after joke. Joke, joke, blah, blah. Every time you go on this ride, it feels like you're doing it for the first time. Number four, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. This is a family coaster that takes you on mine cars through a mountain. It's a little bit thrilling, but it's not as bad as something like Rock and Roller Coaster or Guardians of the Galaxy at Epcot. The ride is very smooth, but the thing is the lines get really long. So we really recommend rope dropping it or waiting until the end of the night to ride it. Now, because this attraction is a bit thrilling, you may want to start your kiddos off with Barnstormer, which is actually really close to Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. See how they do on that before getting on this attraction because there are quite a few drops. My favorite thing about this ride is that each individual car can rock back and forth so it also creates some fun moments for you and the family. Number three, Haunted Mansion. It's a classic attraction that's a must-see at Magic Kingdom. This is a spooky tour through a haunted house on an Omnimover buggy. It features impressive special effects and animatronics, especially for such an old attraction. There's always something new to discover with each ride, so it has great rewritability. So the theming for this ride is next level, plus the wait times are not too long typically, so we love this ride. If you have small children, it's best to look at a ride through on YouTube before you go on your vacation and make sure that they don't find it too scary. Number two. Two, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. This is quite an old attraction at Magic Kingdom, but it still holds up to this day. It is a mid-level thrill coaster, I would say, that goes relatively fast and has a ton of drops and twists and turns. It's also quite a long coaster, about three minutes in length. And if you've ever been on any other roller coasters, that's actually quite long. Some of them, like Tron, are only a minute long. So if your kids can handle this is questionable. See how they do on Barnstormer and then Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and then maybe ask them if they want to give this one a shot. Even some adults don't like to go on it. Here you go. <laughs> Woo! It's even better at night because you can't see the track and where it's actually headed. Number one, Pirates of the Caribbean. This is a classic Disney World attraction. It's been around for a long time and it's still really popular because of the animatronics, the great show scenes, including the giant boats with the cannons going off, lots of animal animatronics, including everyone's favorite with the dog and the keys. I'm sure if you've been on this ride, you can smell it as we're talking about it. Now, we wanted to give an honorable mention to our favorite attraction that recently closed. Splash Mountain. Soon to be Tiana's Bayou Adventure. We wanted to put this on the list because that was our favorite attraction at Walt Disney World, but we are super excited to ride Tiana's Bayou Adventure. We absolutely can't wait and we're going to try to be there on opening day. The attraction is due to open very soon. So if you're going to Walt Disney World in the next few months, make sure you ride this attraction. Now for our top five worst attractions at Magic Kingdom. Number five, Peter Pan's Flight. Now this is an example of a ride that we absolutely love, but the wait times are super long. They really make you feel like you're flying over London. This might be a hot take and we are sorry for the Peter Pan lovers out there, but the line is just incredibly long, typically 90 plus minutes. 
And last time we were on the ride, we had a lightning lane, so we didn't wait that long. But the ride stopped three times while we were on it. Because it's an omni mover and it's never supposed to stop, there are a lot of people that might get tripped up or need help getting on, so they have to stop the entire attraction. Now, while we understand that, it takes away from the ride experience, especially if you're waiting 90 minutes in line. Number four. Astro Orbiter. Now this is another one of those spinning attractions that you can find at any carnival or any theme park and you can find a lot more of them at Disney. And I would say a lot better ones at Disney. Now the reason this is on the list is because it is an extremely old attraction that really needs some maintenance. The lines get super long for it even though it's very short and you actually have to take a really hot elevator up to a second story just to ride it and that really complicates the line situation. Now it does have great views especially at night but again it's a skippable attraction and it's definitely one of the worst for us at Magic Kingdom. Number three, Carousel of Progress. It's a pretty neat spinning theater attraction where you spin around a stage and go through four different show scenes, taking you through years of progress in human innovation. The reason why it's on our list is because it can be somewhat dull and repetitive. Air conditioning is quite nice, but that's pretty much it. The last time I was on this, I was somewhat falling asleep because you really are just learning about inventions through the decades and that's about it. I will say that the song is quite catchy, so you will be humming it after you leave the ride. Typically for a show attraction like this, if you don't like it, you can get up and leave, but because the theater is a 360 rotating theater, you actually can't get up and leave. There's no way out, there's no way out! We're doomed, doomed! Make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. Number two. It's a small world. This might be another hot take because it is one of those classic Disney attractions, both at Disneyland and Disney World. The reason it's on this list is because the lines can get quite long. The ride is annoying at best. I'm not gonna lie, I find it really irritating. I wanna get off. You can't get off, we have five more continents to visit. It's also 10 to 12 minutes in length, so it's quite long. So if the wait time is five minutes long and you really need to get off your feet, maybe give it a go. Or alternatively, if you just wanna look at people riding it, you can actually go to Pinocchio's Village House and sit by the windows that actually look into the attraction, which is really cool. For us, we're sorry to say this is a skippable attraction. Number one, Tomorrowland Speedway. This is a very slow moving, gasoline powered car ride. I think is the best way to describe it. It's almost like you're on a go-kart, but you're limited in where you can drive because you're on somewhat of a track and it goes really slow. There's not a lot of theming in the ride. So the queue for this can get somewhat long, plus you're outside the entire time in the hot Florida sun. The cars are not only really slow, but they are extremely hard to steer. It's going to be very frustrating for you as an adult, but if you're a kid, it's a great way to drive a car. So like we said at the beginning, Magic Kingdom is absolutely our favorite park. There are magical moments, tons of attractions for you to experience, and it's just overall an amazing theme park. And if you're curious how much our wedding there costs, we're including a link in the description below. Let us know in the comments if you agree or disagree disagree with our picks. And with that, we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.